The clerk will ring the bell. All members take their desk, take their seats. The hour for convening for the 2023 session of the House of Representatives having arrived, all members please take your seats. Please check your desk drawer for your voting card, your white voting card, and place it in the slot on your desk so that you may vote in a few minutes. Doorkeepers will please close the doors and keep them closed. Well, good morning. And it is a great morning, a day to convene and begin the work of the people's business. The first order of business this morning is we will have scripture reading and prayer by the chaplain, after which we will have the Pledge of Allegiance to the flag. Our chaplain this morning is familiar to all but 43 of you. It's the former representative Randy Nix of LaGrange. Pastor Nix. Good morning. I love those short introductions because they keep telling me that what I'm supposed to speak about is fi about five minutes, and I can't do anything for five minutes. I, I was, I'll soon be a former representative, but I got a, a, a scripture verse that was sent to me this morning that says, Jesus Christ is the same yesterday and today and forever, Hebrews 13, 8. So I will, uh, I will just remind you of that and remind myself of that when I don't have to get up and come in here in the morning, which is very good. Madam Speaker, I want to thank you for allowing me to come. I'm extremely honored to be here for this first time as an almost non-member. Before I begin my devotional thoughts, though, uh, I must acknowledge the absence of Speaker David Ralston, someone that I counted as a very dear friend and someone who loved this house. Uh, I believe there are plans to honor him at a later date, and I know that he will be missed uh, in many ways. I want to take just a minute to share a few thoughts with you this morning, maybe a word of inspiration, but share just a little bit of my experience, some of the things I learned. I'm not going to say wisdom, but experience from the last 16 years. I'd like to start with a brief story. Andy Stanley, who many of you know, a uh, prominent Atlanta pastor, the founder of North Point Ministries, wrote a book in 2022 titled, Not In It, To Win It. And there's a great discussion on the intersection of politics and the church. He tells a story that occurred when one of his children was just 18 months old. He said that they had a baby monitor on the baby's crib, and the baby was upstairs. They were downstairs. They had had some friends over for dinner, and they were cleaning up. He said as they were doing that, they began to hear the child up there coughing violently. And they listened just a moment and it got worse and it was obvious the child was having trouble breathing. He said they ran up there, got to the child, picked him up and did everything they could do, but it just was not getting any better. And then in a moment of panic, they called 911. Well, he said it seemed like kind of an eternity, but just a few minutes later, the EMTs arrived. He said as they came in the front door, his wife brought them to him. He was standing in the kitchen holding the child. And as they came in, they had all their equipment. They set it down. And the oldest of the two EMTs came and reached to take the baby. And he said, of course, I stepped back. He said, I asked the question any responsible parent would ask before handing their child over to a skilled emergency medical technician. Are you a Republican or a Democrat? 
You would never trust the health of your sick child to someone without first knowing their political affiliation, would you? Right? And he says, of course not. You are only concerned with their competency and their ability and their desire to help your sick child. And from my experience, I think that the moral of that story is that everything can't be measured by R's and D's. The greatest currency that you can have is relationships. And that is especially true as you work with your fellow members here in this house. I'd like to challenge you, if I may, to write down and possibly memorize two verses of Scripture that meant a lot to me over the last 16 years. The first one is Psalm 5110. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. And then Psalm 1914. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, my strength and my redeemer. Did you notice the one word that was in both of those verses? The heart. The meditation of my heart and creating me a clean heart. The Bible says that, the, the Bible definition of heart says it is the seat of life or strength. Hence it means mind, soul, spirit, or one's entire emotional nature and understanding. And Jesus says this about the heart. He said, but those things which proceed out of the mouth come forth from the heart, and they defile the person. For out of the heart proceeds evil thoughts, murders, adulteries, thefts, false witness, and blasphemies. So I ask you to memorize those verses. Write those verses down. Review them often, and keep your heart clean as you deal with your fellow members here. And I think that will make it a whole lot easier. I'd like to close, and I hope I'm within my five minutes or pretty close, with a poem that I think will help you develop and maintain a clean heart and to build those strong and productive relationships with your fellow members. This was written by Louis Shimon, and it's titled, I Know Something Good About You. Wouldn't this old world be better if the folks we meet would say, I know something good about you and treat us just that way? Wouldn't it be fine and dandy if each hand clasp, fond and true, carried with it this assurance, I know something good about you? Wouldn't life be lots more happy if the good that's in us all were the only thing about us that folks bothered to recall. Wouldn't life be lots more happy if we praised the good we see? For there's such a lot of goodness in the worst of you and me. Wouldn't it be nice to practice that fine way of thinking too? You know something good about me. I know something good about you. Would you stand with me for prayer, please? Lord, I come to you this morning and I lift up each member of this house. Lord, those that have been here for a long time and those that are new. Father, I pray for them. I pray that they will work to maintain clean hearts, that they will keep themselves in a position to be able to work with others on a, on a basis that would make them um, cooperate and do the people's business. Lord, we thank you for the many blessings you've given us. I pray this day for the leadership of this house. Father, I thank you that you have put them in this place at this time for this, for this time uh, to do your will. Lord, go with them throughout this day and throughout this session and let them turn to you for all knowledge, for we know that all good things come from you. In Christ's name, amen. Now, if you would, please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance.
doorkeepers will open the doors. The house will come to attention. Now a communication from the Secretary of State will be read into the rec record certifying the representatives for the 23-24 term. The clerk will read. District 1, Mike Cameron. District 2, Steve Tarvin. District 3, Mitchell Horner. District 4, Casey Carpenter. District 5, Mike Matt Barton. District 6, Jason Ridley. J District 8, Stan Gunner. District 9, Will Wade. District 10, Victor Anderson, Victor, District 11, Rick Jaspers, District 12, Eddie Lumsden, District 13, Katie Dempsey, District 14, Mitchell Scoggins, District 15, Matthew Gamble, District 16, Trey Kelly, District 17, Martin Momtahan, District 18, Tyler Paul Smith, District 19, Joseph Gullett, Dis District 20, Charlize Bird, District 21, Brad Thomas. District 22, Jordan Ridley. District 23, Mandy Ballinger. District 24, Carter Barrett. District 25, Todd Jones. District 26, Lauren McDonald. District 27, Lee Hawkins. District 28, Brent Cox. District 29, Matt Dubnik. District 30, Derek McCollum. District 31, Emery Donahue. District 32, Chris Irwin, District 33, Alan Powell, District 34, Devin Seaball, District 35, Lisa Campbell, District 36, Ginny Earhart, District 37, Mary Frances Williams, District 38, David Wilkerson, District 39, Terry Cummings, District 40, Doug Stoner, District 41, Michael Smith, District 42, Terry Anulowitz, District 43, Solomon Adena, District 44, Don Parsons. District 45, Sharon Cooper. District 46, John Carson. District 47, Jan Jones. District 48, Scott Hilton. District 49, Chuck Martin. District 50, Michelle Au. District 51, Esther Panich. District 52, Shea Roberts. District 53, Deborah Silcox. District 54, Betsy Holland. District 55, Inga Willis. District 56, Misha Maynard. District 57, Stacy Evans. District 58, Park Cannon. District 59, Phil Olalier. District 60, Sheila Jones. District 61, Roger Bruce. 62, Tana, Tanya Miller. District 50, 63, Kim Sh Schofield. District 64, Kimberly News. District 65, Mandisha Thomas. District 66, Kimberly Alexander, District 67, Lydia Glaze, District 68, Tish Nugisi, District 69, Deborah Baysmore, District 70, Lynn Smith, District 71, Jay Collins, District 72, David Huddleston, District 73, Josh Bonner, District 74, Karen Mathiak, District 75, Mike Glanton, District 76, Sandra Scott. District 77, Rhonda Bernal. District 78, Demetrius Douglas. District 79, Yasmin Neal. District 80, Long Tran. District 81, Scott Holcomb. District 82, Mary Margaret Oliver. District 83, Car Karen Lupton. District 84, Omari Crawford, District 85, Carla Drenner, District 86, Amani Barnes, District 87, Viola Davis, District 88, Billy Mitchell, District 89, Becky Evans, District 90, Syra Draper, District 91, Angela Moore, District 92, Rhonda Taylor, District 93, Doreen Carter, District 94, Karen Barrett, District 95, Darshan Kendrick. District 96, Pedro Marin. District 97, Ruwa Roma. District 98, Marvin Lynn. District 99, Matt Reeves. District 100, David Clark. District 101, Greg Kennard. District 102, Gabe Okoye. District 103, Sue Hong. District 104, Chuck Chuck Estration, District 105, 
Farouk Mogul, District 106, Shelley Hutchinson, District 107, Sam Parks, District 108, Jasmine Clark, District 109, Dewey McLean, District 110, Shagan Aduna, District 111, Ronaldo Martinez, District 112, Bruce Williamson, District 113, Sharon Henderson, District 114, Tim Fleming, District 115, Regina Lewis Ward, District 116, Almadi Holly, District 117, Lauren Daniel, District 118, Clint Crow, District 120, Houston Gaines, District 121, Marcus Wiedauer, District 122, Spencer Fry, District 123, Rob Leverett, District 124, Trey Rhodes, District 125, Barry Fleming, District 126, Gloria Frazier, District 127, Mark Newton, District 128, Mac Jackson, District 129, Carlton Howard, District 130, Lynn Gladney, District 130, Jody Lott, District 132, Brian Prince, District 133, Kenneth Vance, District 134, David Knight, District 135, Beth Camp, District 136, David Jenkins, District 137, Debbie Buckner, District 138, Vance Smith, District 139, Richard Smith, District 140, Tremaine Reese, District 141, Carolyn Hughley, District 142, Miriam Paris, District 143, James Beverly, District 144, Dale Washburn, District 145, Robert Dickey, District 146, Shaw Blackman, District 147, Bethany Ballard, District 148, Noel Williams, District 149, Danny Mathis, District 150, Patty Bentley, District 151, Mike Chokas, District 152, Bill Yerda, District 153, David Sampson, District 154, Gerald Green, District 155, Matt Hatchett, District 156, Lisa Hagen, District 157, Bill Werkheiser, District 158, Butch Parrish, District 159, John Burns, District 160, Lehman Franklin, District 161, Bill Hitchens, District 162, Carl Gilliard, District 163, Ann Allen Westbrook, District 164, Ron Stevens, District 165, Edna Jackson, District 166, Jesse Petrie, District 167, Buddy Deloach, District 168, Al Williams, District 169, Clay Perkle, District 170, Kenny Houston, District 171, Joe Campbell, District 173, Darlene Taylor, District 174, John Corbett, District 175, John Hood, District 176, James Burchett, District 177, Dexter Sharper, District 178, Stephen Meeks, District 179, Rick Townsend, and District 180, Stephen Saints. This communication from the, <clears throat> from the Office of Secretary of State was certified by Brad Raffensperger, Secretary of State of the State of Georgia. Tender it into the record. At this time, roll call will be called. Check your desk drawer for your white voting card and insert it into the slot so that you may vote. The clerk will ring the bell. All members present will please vote yes or green on your voting machine to signify your presence in the chamber. The clerk will unlock the machine. Have all members voted? Have all members voted? If so, the clerk will lock the machine. The next order of business will be the administering of the oath of office by the clerk to the representatives elect. At this time, the speaker will take her seat for the administration.
On your desk, you will find a written oath of office. The oath of office will be administered at your desk. After the oath is administered, please sign the oath and place your district number at the top of the oath. The oath of office will be administered today by Justice Michael P. Boggs, Chief Justice of the Supreme Court of Georgia. Justice Boggs. Good morning. Before we get to the uh, duty that lies near us, let me just say, go dogs. Uh, uh, thank you, Bill, and thank you, Madam Speaker. Uh, thank you, Speaker-elect Burns, for the invitation to be with you here today. Um, I began my career in public service as a member of this body 22 years ago today. I hope you all find in your service to your constituents and to your state and to your country uh, that it is gra as gratifying as I have found my service to this state. With that, I'm going to ask you to repeat this oath after me uh, and at the end to affirm or swear that you agree with it. Knowing some of you as I do, I'm going to go very slowly. So, <laughs> you. <coughs> You will all please raise your right hands, place your left hand on the, on the Bible, and repeat after me. I do here solemnly swear or affirm that I will support the Constitution of this state and the United States and on all questions and measures which may come before me, I will so conduct myself as will in my judgment be most conducive to the interest and prosperity of this state. I further swear or affirm that I am not the holder of any unaccounted for public money due this state. Or any, or any political subdivision or authority thereof, or authority thereof. and that I am not the holder of any office, of, any office. Of, trust of trust under the government of the United States, of the United States. Any, other any other state, or any foreign state, state. and that I have been a resident of my district for the time required by the Constitution and laws of this state, and that I am otherwise qualified to hold said office according to the Constitution and laws of Georgia. So help me God. All right, one down, one to go. Repeat after me, I am a citizen of the state of Georgia and a member of the General Assembly, and, the General Assembly. and the recipient of, and the recipient of public, funds public funds for services rendered, for services rendered. As, such officer. as such officer. And I do hereby solemnly swear, and, solemnly swear. and affirm, and affirm. That, I that I will support the constitutions of the United States, of the United States. and the Constitution of the State of Georgia. So help me God. Congratulations.
At this time, we're going to ask that uh, family and friends now depart the, har the house floor. We're going to ask that friends and family please depart the house floor. We're going to ask that family and friends please depart the house floor. We have business we need to take up here.
Family and friends, please depart the House floor. Friends and family, please depart the House floor. Please depart the House floor. Thank you. The next order of business is the election of the Speaker of the House for the 2023-2024 term. The House is now open for nominations for Speaker. The Chair recognizes the gentleman from the 158th, Representative Butch Parrish. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. Good morning, everybody. It's good to be here with you this morning. To uh, you returning members, welcome back to the People's House. To the new members, welcome. I hope that you'll enjoy your time here in this house because it's a very special place. You'll make friends here that will last you a lifetime. This morning, I have the honor of nominating Leader John Burns for Speaker of the House. John was elected to the House in 2004 and then elected Majority Leader in 2015. Since John has been in the House, he has worked to bring sound, environmentally balanced economic development, world-class health care, quality education, and improved transportation to Georgia. Many of you returning members have had the opportunity to know him and work with him during his time here in the House. For some of you who may not know him quite as well, let me share just a few thoughts with you. He's a successful businessman. He's active in his community and in his church. John has accomplished many things in his life, but the greatest accomplishment was convincing Dale to marry him. <laughs> <laughs> They've been married 46 years. They live on their family farm in Effingham County, have two grown sons and five grandchildren, and most of them are here today. John graduated from Effingham County High School and earned his bachelor's degree in political science from Georgia Southern College. He also holds a Juris Doctor degree from John Marshall Law School. John's smart, he's a hard worker, he has a quick wit and a sense of humor. He's a good listener, he's respectful, and he's dependable. And he reaches out to all members, those in his party, those across the aisle, and even our friends over on the other side of the building in the Senate. And I want to share with you just one example 
of how he has worked with members of both parties in this House and those in the Senate. This past session, Leader Burns was able to negotiate an adjournment resolution with the Senate very early in the session so that we knew the days that we would be in session, the days we would be out of session, and when we would actually finish the session, sine die. Now, some of you that have been here a while understand just how difficult it is to negotiate and work out an agreement like that. This happened early, very early in the session and was the best example I have seen of working together to adopt an adjournment resolution, the earliest that I have ever seen in the time that I've been here in this House. You returning members will understand the importance of this, and you new members will soon understand the importance of having a schedule so you can plan for the things that are important to you. The House needs a steady hand on the rudder that can navigate calm waters as well as stormy seas. John Burns has that steady hand. General Colin Powell once said, great leaders are almost always great simplifiers who can cut through argument, debate, and doubt to offer a solution everybody can understand. John Burns is that leader. It's my pleasure to nominate John Burns for Speaker of the House, and I ask that you join me in electing him Speaker. Thank you very much. Chair recognizes the lady from the 117th Representative, Lauren Daniel. I rise today to second the nomination of Representative John, Bur John Burns as Speaker of the House. Um, I, th I do believe he has great passion for the people of this state, and I think that he has the resolve and the character that is necessary to lead us during such a time as this. And so I ask that you please join me today as we cast this vote, and I hope that you will cast it for Representative John Burns as our next Speaker of the House. Representative Lauren Daniel has seconded the nomination of Representative John Burns to be the Speaker of the House for the 2023-2024 term. The chair recognizes the majority leader for a motion. I move that nominations be closed. Majority leader has moved that the nominations be closed. Is there any objection to closing the nominations? Is there any objection? Hearing none, the nominations are closed. The chair recognizes the minority leader. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. I would move that the House elect John Burns as Speaker of the House by acclamation. The minority leader has moved that the, that the House of Representatives elect John Burns by acclamation. Is there any objection to that motion? Is there any objection to that motion? Hearing no objection, John Burns is elected Speaker of the Georgia House of Representatives by acclamation. The chair appoints as a committee of escort the gentleman from the 33rd, Representative Alan Powell, the gentleman from the 11th, Representative Rick Jaspers, the gentleman from the 139th, Representative Richard Smith, the gentleman from the 155th, Representative Matt Hatchett, the gentleman from the 176th, Representative James Burchett, the gentleman from the 9th, Representative Will Wade, the lady from the 13th, Representative Katie Dempsey, the gentleman from the 29th, Representative Matt Dubnik. The lady from the 147th, Representative Bethany Ballard. The lady from the 137th, Representative Debbie Buckner. The gentleman from the 128th, Representative Mac Jackson. 
the lady from the 117th, Representative Lauren Daniel. Will the Committee of Escort please escort the speaker into the House? Well, wow. hey y'all. Well, good morning. Not because of this, but because of y'all. What a great day for Georgia. Let me salute y'all. Thank you, Minority Leader Beverly. I appreciate that. Thank you, Lauren, for those kind words. And to my dear friend, Chairman Butch Parrish, appreciate you more than you know. Thank you. And I want to thank you all. Thank you for the honor of serving as your speaker. Whether you're a Republican a, or a Democrat, new or returning member, I will work to serve each of you and our house to the very best of my ability. This is admittedly a very sweet moment, that very bittersweet moment. Just a matter of weeks before today, I never would have imagined standing for this office. The passing of Speaker David Ralston has left a hole in the heart of this house. I was honored to call him my speaker, but I considered it an even greater honor to have called him my friend. 
I want to thank our 74th speaker, Jan Jones. I want to thank Speaker Jones for stepping into the chair when Speaker Ralston passed. In doing so, she became the first lady to grace this office in the history of our great state. Thank you, Jan. Now, my vision for this house is straightforward. This house will continue to lead it will continue to be independent while working with our colleagues in the Senate and the governor. It will continue to champion those policies which keep Georgia the best place to live, work, and yes, raise a family. There are times we may disagree. That's a healthy part of, rep of a representative body. But when we do disagree, we must do so respectfully and in accordance with the rules that we will adopt. I am honored to serve you as a speaker of the People's House. Now, on this great day that we celebrate, I would be remiss if I did not thank all of the families who were here today to celebrate with us all. I want to particularly thank my family and the love of my life, my wife, Dale, for her support for walking with me on our journey together. Thank you, honey. I love you. I know, I know, she's the better half, I get it. <laughs> no doubt about that. Soon, the House will begin the work of the session, adopting a budget, passing legislation, and advancing policies that will move this state forward. Thank you for your confidence. I look forward to serving with all of you as we move through this process. Thank you very much. I am very humbled. Now, uh, we have some, we have some couple of things to tend to, y'all. We're going to move through them very respectfully and very deliberately. The first thing we're going to do next is elect a, to elect a speaker pro tem. We're going to elect a, a speaker pro tem for the House for the 2023-2024 20, 20, 20, term. The House is now open for nominations for speaker pro tem. The chair now recognizes the gentleman from the 155th District, Representative Matt Hatchett, for a nomination. Thank you, Speaker Burns. I rise to nominate the lady from the 47th, 
the 74th speaker of this house, the Honorable Jan Jones, as speaker pro tem for the 2023-2024 session. My friend and our friend, Representative Matt Hatchett, has nominated, rep nominated Representative Jan Jones to be the speaker pro tem of the House for the 2023-2024 term. The chair now recognizes the lady from the 170th district, Representative Penny Houston. Thank you, Mr. S Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It is my honor and privilege to second the nomination of Speaker Jan Jones for Speaker Pro Temp. And many of us have talked so much about Jan being the first woman to serve as Speaker. To put it in more perspective, Georgia was created on January the 2nd, 1788, and Jan and Representative Jones, Speaker Jones, is uh, the first woman to serve in this position. Uh, thank you, Jan, for what you do for this state, and I'm sure she'll continue to work as she has for the past 22 years, I think, that she's been here. And uh, we are honored to have her represent us as Speaker Pro Tem. Thank you, Representative. Yes, it's been a long wait, but it's a good thing coming, so we, we're glad. We're so proud. Major now I represent the majority leader for a mo rep recognize the majority leader for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that nominations be closed. The majority leader has moved that the nominations for, for Speaker Pro Tem be closed. Is there objection to closing the nominations? Hearing none, the nominations are closed. The, the chair now recognizes the gentleman from the 100. The majority leader wishes to be recognized again. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that the House elect Representative Jan Jones as Speaker Pro Tem by acclamation. The majority, leader, majority leader has moved that speak, the nominee for Speaker Pro Tem, Jan Jones, be elected by acclamation. Is there objection? There's no objection. Speaker Pro Tem, Jan Jones. The new speaker pro tem for the 2023-2024 terms. <laughs> Sir? The chair appoints as a committee of escort the gentleman from the 10th, Representative Victor Anderson, the lady from the 23rd, Representative, Representative Mandy Ballinger, the gentleman from the 5th, Representative Matt Barton, the lady from the 135th, Representative Beth Camp, the gentleman from the 171st, Representative Joe Campbell, the gentleman from the 154th, Representative Gerald Green, the lady from the 156th, Representative Leisha. Lisa Hagen, the lady from the 60th, Representative Sheila Jones, the gentleman from the 25th, Representative Todd Jones, the lady from the 56th, Representative Misha Maynard, the lady from the 173rd, Representative Darlene Taylor, and the gentleman from the 152nd, Representative Bill Yurta. Will the committee of escort please escort the speaker pro tem into the house?
speaker will right now recognize the speaker pro tem for remarks. Thank you, uh, speaker pro tem Jones. Your service to the people of Georgia in this house has been exemplary. We look forward to continue to work with you as the leader in this house, and we appreciate you and what you've done for all of Georgians. Thank you. Thank, thank you very much. Well, thank you, and thank all of you here today for allowing me to serve as Speaker Pro Tem of the People's House. I'm truly proud to know you, to work beside each one of you, and to uphold the traditions and the honor of the House. I want to thank the gentleman from the 155th from Dublin, Georgia, where my mother lives, Matt Hatchett, for nominating me, and thank you to the gentle lady of the 170th from Nashville, my good friend Penny Halston, for seconding my nomination and not being able to go without saying a few words, even though she was probably asked not to. <laughs> uh, but you know Penny. Um, I'm grateful to serve by God's grace and with the support of the good people of the 47th District in North Fulton, just as you serve because of the people back home that have elected you. I serve because my family stands behind me and with me patiently, as your families do for you. And I hope you never forget that, because when you come in, you come in with the support of your friends and family. And I wish for each one of you when you leave, that you leave with the support and the good closeness of your friends and family. Please, I encourage you not to forget that. Thank you to my husband, Kalen, our four children, the newest Jones granddaughter, Agnes, and another grandchild arriving this year. I'm also grateful to this body for its sound judgment in electing John Burns as the 175th speaker of the Georgia House of Representatives. John Burns nominated me as Speaker pro, pro Tem 14 sessions ago, the first session in which I served as Speaker Pro Tem, and I've never forgotten it. I know his heart and his deep commitment in improving Georgians' lives. I'm honored to serve this House and you, Speaker Burns, on its behalf. I look forward to Majority Leader Chuck F. Strachan's strong leadership, the good work of the Majority Leadership Team, and the Republican Caucus. As well, congratulations to Minority Leader James Beverly and new Minority Whip, Sam Park, in their critical roles. I look forward to joining with both of you, the Minority Caucus leadership team and the Democrat Caucus, as we strive all together, all 180 of us, to make Georgia an unparalleled place of opportunity for our constituents. Welcome to the 43 newly elected freshmen to the People's House. We serve in a Capitol building that echoes the efforts of representatives that came before us including the enduring accomplishments of former speaker David Ralston, who I miss every day. For 134 years, legislators have gathered in this building to craft solutions that improve constituents' lives, and each one of you will be a part of that this term. I'm confident we'll continue to do the same this session, and only by each of us, Democrat, Republican, rural, suburban, and urban, working together and focusing on what is truly important to the 11 million people who call Georgia home. I appreciate you as the people's representatives and your role in moving Georgia ever forward. Thank you once again for allowing me to serve you as your speaker pro tem. Thank you. Thank you, Representative Jones, for your service to Georgia. The next order of business in the, is the election of the Clerk of the House for the 2023-2024 term. 
The chair now recognizes the gentleman from the 33rd representative, 33rd district, Representative Allen Powell. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's an honor for me to rise this morning to nominate William Bill Riley as officer of the clerk of this house. To the new members, the clerk of the house, that role that he portrays is one of the most important functions of this ha house. This is the man who guides the office that prints all the bills, that records all the bills. He will be your friend, and most importantly, he will follow in the footsteps of the greats of Glenn Ellard, Robbie Rivers, as he has done for the last 10 years of shepherding this house. The importance of this position, while he's not a state, a district elected official, is that he is the most important officer of this body. He runs that office, and probably without a doubt, we have the best clerk's office in the nation. And you soon will find out, as so many of your senior colleagues have, the importance of that office. He can give guidance, he can give counsel, he's just not gonna tell you how to vote, because he is that nonpartisan. But this is a great man, and ladies and gentlemen, I would refer you to him and his knowledge to get to know him, he's Bill, and just hope that even though his hobby at his age is he is still an avid snow skier, that he doesn't break his darn leg <laughs> before the end of the session. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, I nominate Bill Riley for clerk of this house. Thank you. Representative Allen Powell has nominated Bill Riley to be clerk of the house, house for the 2023-2024 term. The chair now recognizes, recognizes the gentleman from the 100 32nd House District, Representative Brian Prince. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to second the nomination of William Bill Riley for Clerk of the House, one who always serves not for himself, but for others. Representative Brian Prince has seconded the nomination of Bill Riley to be elected clerk of the House for the 2023-2024 term. The chair now recognizes the majority leader for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that the nominations be closed and the, that the entire membership of the House cast their vote for the election of Bill Riley as clerk of this House. The majority leader has moved that the nominations for clerk be closed and that the entire membership cast their votes for the election of Bill Riley as clerk. Is there any objection to the nominations being closed? The chair hears none, the nominations are closed. Is there any objection to directing the deputy clerk to cast the entire vote of the membership who are present for the election of Bill Riley as clerk of this body? The chair hears none, the deputy clerk is so directed. On the election of the clerk of the house, Bill Riley received the entire vote of the membership who are present and is hereby declared elected clerk for the ensuing term. Congratulations, Clerk Riley. The chair appoints as a committee of escort the gentleman from the second, Representative Steve Tarvin, the gentleman from the 11th, Representative Rick Jaspers, the lady from the 53rd, Representative Deborah Silcox, the gentleman from the 78th, Representative Demetrius Douglas, the gentleman from the 81st, Representative Scott Holcomb, the lady from the 95th, Representative Darshan Kendrick, the lady from the 106th, Rep Representative Shelley Hutchinson. The gentleman from the 138th, Representative Vance Smith. With a committee of escort, when you all convene, no rush. <laughs> there is a plane leaving here. <laughs> will, the, will the committee of escort please escort the clerk into the house?
At this time, the, oh, let me do that. First one, James. That may need some work. <laughs> At this time, the chair will administer the oath of office to the clerk of the house, Bill Riley. Okay, Bill. Do you hereby swear that you will discharge the duties of the office of the clerk of the house of representatives faithfully and to the best of your skill and knowledge? Do you further swear that you are not the holder of any public money due this state or any political subdivision or authority thereof, un unaccounted for, that you, are, or, that you are not the holder of any office of trust under the government of the United States, nor of any one of the several states, nor of any foreign, foreign state, that you are otherwise qualified to hold said office according to the Constitution and the laws of Georgia. If you do, please state, I do. I do. Congratulations. Thank you, sir. Clerk of the House, Bill Riley. Thank you, Mr. Clerk. We all appreciate, those of us who have been here, appreciate your work and your diligence, and the members that have just arrived will certainly do that in the very near future. Thank you for your devotion to Georgia and your service. And I may well, at this point, make the point, um, thank you for your devotion to the late speaker, David Ralston. You were his dear friend and former law partner, and uh, I know he loved you, thought the world of you, and uh, y'all were a great team, and we look forward to working with you. The next order of our business is the election of a doorkeeper for the House for the 2023-24 term. The House is now open for nom nominations for doorkeeper. The chair recognizes the gentleman from the 6th, Rep 6th Dist House District, Representative Jason Ridley. Mr. Speaker, I rise to nominate the great Georgian Corey Mulkey as the 2023-2024 doorkeeper. Uh, furthermore, Mr. Speaker, I mean, what better man could you find that looks more like a doorkeeper than Mr. Corey? <laughs> I'll have to say amen to that nomination, no doubt about that. Thank you, Representative. Chair recognizes the lady from the 137th, Representative Debbie Buckner. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise to second the nomination of a caring, efficient, loyal, and pub great public servant, Corey Mulkey, as the doorkeeper of the Georgia House of Representatives. Thank you. Representative Bugner has seconded the nomination of Corey Mulkey as doorkeeper. Chair recognizes the majority leader for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that nominations be closed and that the entire body of the House cast their votes for the election of Corey Mulkey as doorkeeper. Thank you, Mr. Majority Leader. The Majority Leader has moved that the nominations of the House be closed and that the entire membership cast their votes for the election of Corey Mulkey as doorkeeper. Is there any objection, objection to closing the nominations? 
The chair hears none, and the nominations are closed. Is there any objection to directing the clerk to cast the entire vote of the membership who are present for the election of Corey Mulkey as doorkeeper? The chair hears none, and the clerk is so directed. On the election of doorkeeper, Corey Mulkey received the entire vote of the membership who are present, and he is hereby declared door elected doorkeeper for the ensu ensuing term. <laughs> Congratulations, Corey. For those who, have not, who do not know Corey, you need to meet him. He's a fine gentleman. We appreciate your service in the past in different capacities, but I certainly look forward to you taking care of us as the doorkeeper. Thank you so much. Our next order of business is the election of a messenger for the House for the 2023 2024 term. The House is now open for nominations for the messenger. The chair recognizes the gentleman from the 155th House District, Representative Matt Hatchett. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. It's my pleasure and honor to nominate Ms. Betsy Theroux as the House messenger. And furthermore, she has held this position previously and served our Speaker Ralston for many years being, I would say, his left hand and making sure that this house keeps moving as efficiently as possible. Thank you, Representative, for the nomination of Betsy Theroux as the messenger. The chair recognizes the lady from the 42nd, Representative Terry Nellowitz, for Thank a second. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I rise today with the honor of seconding the nomination of Betsy Thoreau for House Messenger. I know that my returning colleagues are familiar with Betsy's warmth and kindness. I'm so excited that now all of our new colleagues, our new members here, they get to experience that firsthand as well as her professionalism, her depth of knowledge of this chamber, and perhaps most importantly, her unfailing patience with each and every one of us. I'm honored to second Betsy Thoreau for House Messenger. And especially with me. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Representative Nolowitz. The chair now recognizes the majority leader, leader for a motion. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that nominations be closed and that the entire membership cast their votes for the election of Betsy Theroux as Messenger. The majority leader has moved that the nominations of the House be closed and that the entire membership cast their votes for the election of Betsy Theroux as messenger. Is there any objection to closing the nominations? Chair hears none and the nominations are closed. Is there any objection to directing the clerk to cast the entire vote of the membership who are present for the election of Betsy Theroux as messenger. Chair hears none, and the clerk is so directed. On the election of the messenger, Betsy Theroux received the entire vote of the membership who are present, and she is hereby declared elected messenger for the ensuing term. Betsy, if the messenger wanted to say something and she declined. I don't know of anyone in this building or any professional that I know that does their job with the integrity, with the compassion, and with the fairness that Betsy does. So for you new, new members to get to know her, you will. For us member, for we members that have just that are returning. We're so pleased that you would come back and be a part of our team here in the House. Thank you, Betsy. The 
chair recognizes the majority leader for the purpose of offering a resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I um, ask that the House adopt House Resolution 1. Clerk reads House Resolution 1. House Resolution 1 by Re Representative Bestration of the 104th to notify the Senate that the House of Representatives has convened. Chair recognizes the Majority Leader to speak to the motion. Well, good morning, everyone. I want to congratulate Speaker Burns, uh, Speaker Pro Tem Jan Jones, and uh, the entire body on their elections this morning. First piece of business is something that uh, we'll hear a lot about uh, throughout the session, I predict. It's the House is hard at work, and we need to check in and make sure the Senate's doing the same thing. So House Resolution 1 is to notify the State Senate that we are now in order, and I'd ask your favorable consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Leader. Do you have that on your desk? This is the standard boilerplate resolution that we normally use every year, so at this point in time, I'm going to ask if there are any objection to the adoption of this resolution. This simply notifies the Senate to turn the lights on over there and get to work so that, we're all, that we've been here for hours. So I would ask that um, don't, I don't hear no objection, the chair here is done. So we're going to adopt the resolution and move forward. Thank you, Mr. Leader. The chair now recognizes the majority leader for the purpose of offering a resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I move that this House adopt House Resolution 2, which is on the desk. House Resolution 2 by Representative Vestration of the 104th calling a joint session of the House of Representatives and the Senate for the purpose of inauguration of the Governor, the Lieutenant Governor, and other executive constitutional officers of the State of Georgia. Chair recognizes the Majority Leader to speak to the resolution. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, House Resolution 2 schedules our joint session, which will take place this Thursday at 9.30 a.m. at the location designated for the purposes of the swearing-in ceremony of the governor and other constitutional officers. I'd ask for your favorable consideration. Thank you. Is there any objection to the adoption of the resolution? Chair hears none. The resolution is adopted. Chair now recognizes the majority, recognizes the majority leader for the purpose. Oh, excuse me. Yeah, we need to do the committee vest report. The resolution is adopted. The chair appoints a committee of escort. The lady from the forty seventh. Speaker Pro Tem, Jan Jones. The gentleman from the 143rd, Representative James Beverly. The gentleman from the 104th, Representative Chuck Estration. The gentleman from the 176th, Representative James Burchett. The gentleman from the 107th, Representative Sam Park. Chair recognizes the majority leader. Excuse me. The chair recognizes the majority leader for the purpose of offering a resolution. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Ladies and gentlemen of the House, I bring to you House Resolution Three, which is the housekeeping resolution that we pass each uh, biennium. It includes certain provisions to allow the Speaker's office 
and other leadership to do what needs to be done to maintain operation of the State House of Representatives. I'd ask for your favorable consideration. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Majority Leader. Is there any objection to the adoption of the resolution? The chair hears none. The resolution is adopted. We're going to do an announcement, and then we're going to wait on the, uh, we have to hold up a few minutes for the Senate to get some work done over there so that it can be transmitted back to us. I'm going to allow Representative Lauren McDonald, if he would come forward and make an announcement. Oh, he, he had to leave. Wonder what that announcement was, he had to leave. I guess that's what it was. No birthdays today, but let's do our birthdays for tomorrow on January the 10th. <laughs> Representative Betsy Holland. There she is. She has a birthday tomorrow. <laughs> Happy birthday, Betsy. Representative uh, Beth Camp. Happy birthday, Representative Camp. And the best to last, Representative Karen Bennett. There she is. Happy birthday to all of you. The House will stand at ease for a few minutes while we await some information from the Senate. So stand at ease. If you need to um, leave at this time, we we'll just have some formalities we need to take care of as part of our opening day um, business so but if not just stand at ease and we'll come back in a few minutes the house will be at ease <laughs> 